Well, this is devotion number three. This is for Tuesday. And the, the title of this is Foolishness of the Cross. And it's 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 25. So let's begin with our scripture. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. So this particular devotion by Jill Duffield um, talks about the idea that the expectations for the Messiah among the Jewish people were absolutely immense. There were just century upon century of, of ideas of what the Messiah should be. And of course, that becomes something that no one person could ever fulfill. I mean, the Messiah was supposed to be this military war leader, um, was supposed to overthrow all these empires. He should have been able to, you know, single-handedly overthrow the Romans and, you know, and at the same time be the perfect king and, and be the perfect judge and be the perfect ruler. And none of these expectations included what really happened. None of them included a cross. None of them included public humiliation or a public execution. Um, none of them included weakness of any kind. I mean, don't we revere winners? I mean, we revere the strong and the and the heroic and the powerful and, and the famous. Um, you know, the person who comes in fourth at the Olympics, we don't hear about them. I mean, we hear about winners. I mean, we even go so far as to idolize criminals who outwit the authorities. We want to root for somebody who can, you know, stick it to the man. But when people are oppressed, um, when they're downtrodden, when they're when they're at the mercy of others, they, they don't envision and, and hope for a savior who's going to have the same fate that they do. So it, it makes perfect sense why people would see the cross as a scandal, that this is not what we wanted, not what we were looking for, not ever. I mean, Jesus was a carpenter from a backwater village. He pulls together this group of uneducated fishermen and tax collectors who were just collaborators with the Romans and, and this desperate crowd of people who follow him, seeking healing, seeking wisdom, seeking all kinds of things. And he manages to get himself into all kinds of trouble with the secular authorities, with the religious leaders, um, and ends up getting executed for it. No one would ever plan any of this for God. I can pretty much guarantee this was a nobody's plan other than God. God so rarely meets our expectations. God inevitably exceeds what we could have planned, but so often what we've planned and what we think God should be doing, God just turns into our own foolishness. I mean, it, it ends up being not at all what we should be about. God in Christ also reveals a wisdom that, that we could never attain on our own shows us a power that's made perfect in weakness, not in strength. You know, think about the things we always seek after. We always want revenge, don't we? 
whereas Christ desires mercy. We want success. Christ is telling us to be servants. We want to try to, you know, to get even. And, and Christ is telling us to love our enemies. We hold grudges. And Christ forgives over and over again. There's nothing more powerful than vulnerable, sacrificial love. God's using what's weak to show us what truly is strong. You know, he's, he's, God's taking the broken and the unwise, the uneducated, the despised, the needy, and he's using them to bear witness to the saving power of the cross. And that's a huge, huge flip from what both the people in Jesus' day and, and us now think we want. We want a hero. I mean, what are the most popular movies now, year after year? Superhero movies. That's what we want. We want someone to come in and save the day. But that's not at all what happens. So here's some questions. Have you ever experienced your wisdom being rendered foolishness in the face of God's plan and purpose? When have you demanded a sign from God? Did you receive it? Was it what you expected? So here's a quick story on that. Many years ago, I was at an early job that I had. And I was trying to decide what what to do. We already had one child. We were about to have a second one, or had just had the second one, actually. And I really couldn't afford that job anymore. <laughs> it was, you know, co going to cost me more in childcare than it was I was making at this point, you know. So I was just trying to decide what to do. And the prayer I prayed repeatedly for days was. I don't know what to do. Show me what I'm supposed to do. And dear God, please make it obvious. Make it obvious to me what I'm supposed to do because I don't know. And in the course of all this, there was a big meeting that was supposed to happen and the church session was gonna decide if they were gonna make my job full-time or just keep it at the part-time that it was. And there was one person on the session I was absolutely sure was on my side and was behind me. And when I discovered that that person was the one who said, no, we shouldn't do this. We shouldn't make this full time. Um, no, I don't think we should. If we lose her, oh well. And I went, oh, that's about as obvious as I think you could make it. Um, I think it's time for me to go. And so the next morning I gave them my letter of resignation and went looking for a new job, um, which was the start of a whole long series of events that, you know, eventually led me to becoming a minister. So it was what I needed, but I prayed, please make it obvious. And it was about the most obvious thing you could imagine. And it was painful because this was a person I considered a friend. And I thought, why in the world would you do this? But that was what I needed. If it had been anybody else, I probably wouldn't have paid attention. And then the last question on here, how are you a fool for Christ? How do you show your foolishness doing things that make no logical sense for Christ? How do you do that? How are you a fool for Christ? What are the signs that God has shown you? That's what we need to think about. And so I hope that, that you know, this devotion helps today. And there'll be plenty more coming after this. And I hope you all have a good day.